Hello kitties, Scott Grove here with another one of my new uh, purchases, a new member of the family that won't be going anywhere. Uh, today we're doing the 1981 PVT40 bass. Uh, this has been a staple in uh, bass guitar history forever. You have these, uh, here's my matching T60 guitar. Now not only were these the uh, staples for such great TV shows as Hee Haw! That's right, Hee Haw was the first people to get an endorsement from PV. A lot of people got them. Um, little did we know uh, it would take us about, oh, what, Sunday, the 80s, 90s, then, what, dang, yeah, I guess it's been 40 years now. <laughs> oh, no. This bass came out 30 years ago. Um, PV came out in the 70s, of course. Skinner used tons of PV gear, uh, amplifier-wise. And who would have thought, everybody kept making fun of PV forever, and who would have thought, but um, pretty much all the PV gear that was ever invented actually still works. Whether it ever, ever sounded good back in the day, as far as anybody thought, uh, who cares? Uh, it still works. <laughs> you can take those old CS800, you know, power amps and... Uh, they're still working, man. <laughs> you can find them in any club all across the country. It don't matter whether they're on stage or they're uh, there to hold the door open, you know, <laughs> as a door stop. Anyway, the uh, PV T40 bass. Awesome. It's a tree, folks. It's not just part of a tree. It's a whole tree. This thing weighs in at, God, probably 12 pounds or something like that. This thing is a log. And on the back side, yep, that's right. They give you a free belt buckle right there. They actually put those out as belt buckles. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that great? But yeah, you could wear that right down there on your belt. And very cool. But you talk about some heavy duty machine heads. Check these suckers out. I mean, these things are everything about this bass is heavy duty. All the way down to them actually thinking and getting it right to use the metal nut on these things. You got a steel nut, you got steel frets. It's going to sound the same. By God, somebody did it right. And who was it? It was PV. A great string retainer. Look at that thing. That thing is a, a pound in itself. It's <laughs> beautiful. All the T-Series guitars, basses, everything were just made like uh, you wouldn't believe. Let me get this on down like you're all used to me doing. Um, there you go. You notice how I suddenly developed a southern accent. You have to when you're talking about PV down here in Mississippi. But look at this thing, man. It's a big old hunk. Are those humbuckers? They can be. Are they single coils? They can be. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Just good old string through right back through the ferrules back here in the back. Uh, tons of curves to make everything fit the big belly boys. And uh, people who actually have an arm, they want to lay it on there, not across, you know, like a hard edge like on a telly or something. This here actually is comfortable. So, go figure, they did something right. Uh, what else did they do right? They got the whole flipping bass right. Um, there's nothing about this bass that is bad. Not a zero zilch. Um, other than possibly the weight. But who cares when you got tone like this and you have a bass that is made like this. Um, back when the USA actually made something that was worth owning. Right here, folks. Um, so the, again, this is 1981. Check out the bridge on this thing. Again, the saddles weigh probably, you know, half a pound each. I mean, that bridge is huge, and it is not fake. That is a steel bridge. It's not made out of some aluminum junk painted that color. So, you go on uh, eBay, try to find these knobs. 25 bucks each to replace those knobs now if you try to find one. I kid you not. 100 bucks for a set, folks. Uh, you part these things out, uh, you can get them sold for more than what you buy them for. Uh, what I pay for this, you ain't gonna believe it. A Craigslist thing with the original hard, shape, hard shell case, all the foam still in it, perfect. As is the base, perfect. $200, kiddies. Um, <laughs> you can't buy a base for $200 that is worth a crap. You're gonna end up with some pizza crap Dean or you know, your Epiphone or your Squires or whatever kind of horrible bases are out there, LTD things um, for 200 bucks used or even new how Dean puts out new bases for that 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 are worth about $25 but uh, 200 bucks are you kidding me uh, this is you'll find out 
here it is. Now what you got is two volume controls. What do they do? They are volume controls. That is it, nothing more. But the thing that is deceiving are the tone controls. When they are up on 10, as they are now, both pickups are actually in single coil. Okay, so it shuts half the coil off. So they're nice and bright, like a good funky type of bass. If you turn them, okay, you have tone from 10 down to 8. Just that little bit, but it's very functional. Okay, for your single coil. So from 10, well, it's a single coil, all the way down to 8, it goes through the whole tone spectrum. But as soon as that sucker hits 7, that pickup goes into humbucking mode. Then all of a sudden you have a big old fat humbucker. And then from 7 on down to 0 is the tone control for the pickup while it is in humbucker. And that is true for both pickups. You have a three-way selector switch. Up, of course, you have your neck. In the middle, you have both pickups. Down, you have your bridge pickup turned on. Then you have a phase switch. No, it is not a phase shifter. For God's sake, people quit asking me about this. <laughs> it just simply goes from series to parallel. It throws your uh, stuff in and out of phase. If you don't know about that, Google is your best friend, kids. Okay, so it just puts your guitar in and out of phase. Up is normal, like any other guitar you have. Then you throw it out of phase here. It goes to some weird junky sounds. I'll show them to you. I never liked it out of phase. Why they would ever throw a switch on there? Because um, guitars used to look cool with a lot of switches on them. Uh, beyond that, I can't tell you why. The neck, okay, is 20 frets. That's all you need on a bass. Beyond that, if you add another low string, cool. If you need a higher string, you might as well be playing guitar. Alright? So, I'm going to show you this bass. Here it is. Everything wide open. Both single coils on. Okay? So, everything is on 10, which means single coils are on. Everything's in the middle. Your face switch is turned off or in the up position. Okay? Here is just a straight walking pattern. Okay, I'm slopping through it. You can grab a big old heavy pick and do it real quick if you want. guy that likes a lot of that high end in their uh, bass so you can do all the pop stuff we can cut it out in just a second but that is just one sound again if you want just the old standard country stuff if you wonder what all that rattling is no it's not the bass it is all these guitars, yep, over 130 guitars here hanging on the wall. So that's what all that noise is. It is not this bass, trust me. <laughs> and we're just going through a good old um, carving amp here. Okay, so, and, and if anybody needs to know, yeah, it has a 15 in it, it has an 8 inch in it, and it has a horn in it, blah, blah, blah. So, um, and I've got a little bit of compressor on here too. Great funk tones, okay? These are some funkin' great tones. <laughs> okay, so nobody ever shows the good sounds of a T40 on YouTube. So there are the good sounds. There are tons of good sounds in here. Let's go straight to just the bridge pickup. Okay, so right here. traditional what they would have used on good old hee haw uh, doing your country bass okay so there's 
everything is single coil. Now, let's check out everything in humbucker mode, okay? I'm going to take both knobs, switch them down to 7 on the tone. Now, and both pickups are on, everything is now in humbucking. Okay, so if you like humbucker pickups. Okay, so it takes off that big treble edge that I like, but some of you uh, heavier players might really enjoy that, especially you guys that, you know, grab your picks and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you got those sounds. Um, bass sounding thing that way especially if you go in humbucking flick the switch up and only go to the neck pickup then you're getting in Gibson EBO range you know back where they call it the mud bass okay so you just have that one pickup on right here in the humbucker and you grab that tone control turn it down a little bit you've got some people out there like a bass to sound like nothing but bass and not with a bunch of high end in it. So there is proof that you can just take this sucker and be as bassy as you want to be. Okay, so same thing. I'll just do that and kill the tone control for the neck pickup. I'm sorry, the bridge pickup. Okay, a lot of that, if you want flat wound sounding strings and that 70s honky tone they used to have, uh, not me and the white guy playing a honky tone, but you know that good old 70s sound, man. Everybody had it. Okay, so it's all right here. Let's go everything wide open again, both pickups. Let's show you the phase switch. Okay, so now we're back to where I like it. This bass has more tone than anything else you can find out there. For a passive bass, something that does not use any batteries, I'll tell you what, you cannot find a better bass than the PVT-40. Um, I will not eat my words on this. Uh, you won't find a better passive bass out there. Um, at 200 bucks for God's sakes. Okay, here's the tone control. I mean the uh, face switch. Who would use it? Not me. <laughs> okay, listen again. You're like, do I have to? That's normal. Here's what the phase. Messing with the tones, I guess you can get some useful sounds. I won't totally count it out. Uh, depending on where you play back here by the bridge. Okay, so you can get some weird funky tones if you want to mess with it. Uh, so I guess, yeah, I'll allow it to be here. I'll probably never use the switch, but... Basically, now your face switches back to normal. 
So there's a quick glimpse into um, a base that everybody should have. Again, um, everybody bitches about the weight on these. I'll tell you what cures it. For every uh, couple pounds that you uh, add to your base, meaning you get a heavier base, uh, add an extra width, you know, like an inch width to your guitar strap, and you won't feel it, dudes. Quit using those skinny straps on those heavy bases. Okay, so grab you a big old fat leather base uh, strap. I know there is a base strap, yes. And they have sheepskin underneath them, and it's just comfortable as all get out. This thing will feel as light as your, you know, acoustic guitar at home. You won't feel it. It will displace all the weight, so don't worry about it. Uh, be glad that something was actually made out of such a, such a huge tree, you know. <laughs> Before, you know, the saved rainforest people got to them. So, again, Scott Grover, the 1981 PVT-40 base. Again, I will vouch for it for whatever that holds. Mo uh, a lot of you people out there just think I'm just some dick, but um, I am. <laughs> but I know what the hell I'm talking about, okay? So, um, yes, this is one of the best bases ever made in the world, period. Uh, it's, it's legendary, and you can pick them up for this price. Um, why buy anything else? Uh, because it looks cool. Uh, these things look huge. I mean, they are huge. <laughs> they just, I mean, that's what they are. They, they are a tree with strings on it. They are monstrous. They are not neck heavy. They do not neck dive on you. They don't do any of that. They are made perfect. Um, the only thing, as I always say, you know, I never like where their jacks are like this. People are like, well, why don't you get one of them there, uh, right angle plugs and quit bitching about how you know everybody puts a jack in the wrong place well when you're using wireless um, they really don't offer that so um, I have to consider that um, why use wireless number one so you will never get shocked and killed on stage like most people have it's happened to so many people uh, that's kind of a big thing about me I cut a partial life number two I just don't like dragging around a cord behind my ass so um, right angle plugs, wireless, uh, generally not available. You can make your own if you put your own capacitors in there and you know how to do the wiring. But anyway, that's just where the plug is. That's where they were back when and that's where they stay. Again, everything's made out of solid steel on these things, including the nut, which is the most brilliant thing they could have done and what everybody in the world should do. Um, the neck is comfortable as all get out. The neck is heavy. The neck weighs what most bases weigh, just the neck alone. That is a solid piece of tree trunk right there. That was a sapling right there. <laughs> but again, listen, kids. I mean, that is just a huge sound of bass. Okay, I went over my normal time on this, but uh, I get excited about things that actually don't suck and the PVT 40 does not suck okay so you can find them everywhere 99 percent of them are going to be plain old wood colored you're going to find a black one uh, okay you're going to be about 95 percent are going to be wood just plain old wood okay uh, about another three percent are going to be sunburst about one percent are going to be white like this and the other one percent you're going to find no, another 8.8% will be black. Then you'll find one little bitty one that's kind of a maroonish red that you'll never find, but they do exist. So, um, 81 was the only year they did the white guy, um, this thing. But cool, cool, cool stuff. Blades on the pickups as of this year. Uh, before this, earlier in 1980 and in 1979, 78, all that stuff. Uh, they did not have the blade pickups. They had what were called toaster pickups, which means they look exactly like these. They resemble the uh, Rickenbacker looking pickups, but they just did not have the blades on them. These are brighter sounding than the older ones. So keep that in mind. If you do get an older one and you see that they do not have the blades on them, they will not have as much high end in it. Oh my God, what do I do? You turn the treble up on your damn amp. <laughs> God, get over it. Uh, it's, it's so little that all you do is take the treble, go like this, and it sounds just like this one, if you want it. So again, I'm 20 minutes into this damn thing. I love it. I'll shut the hell up. And uh, you guys have fun. Thanks for enjoying the 1981 PVT-40. Brought to you by Ron Cole. The makers of the pop Pocket Fisherman. That's what it is. <laughs> okay, I'm out of here, kids. Bye.